Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock with another package from Bricklink.com, plus I'll be giving you a few of my early thoughts on the brand new modular. So I've long resisted the temptation to join the LAN, a LEGO Ambassadors network, and get uh, all the new sets early and free and all the rest of it, even though, wow, it's sorely tempting at times, <laughs> because I don't really want to become a review channel or a LEGO news channel, but I do get requests from time to time when there's been quite a significant release uh, to share my thoughts on it, just because people are interested. Uh, so I thought I'd do a few minutes on the release of the new modular building, the Boutique Hotel and Art Gallery, set 10297, uh, just to uh, let you know what I think of it, essentially. Uh, and if you don't like that, do let me know. If you do, then let me know that as well, and maybe we'll make it a more regular feature as part of these brick calls, because I figure doing it as part of these videos makes uh, the build videos less diluted. So uh, I think this is the right home for them, rather than doing additional videos, which will take even more time out of my cramped schedule. So uh, yeah, let's do that. So here are my first thoughts on the new modular for 2022, the Boutique Hotel, set 10297. Uh, and I'll just start by saying that I usually highly anticipate the release of the new modular each January or each December when it's announced, perhaps. Uh, and I really look forward to getting the uh, police department last year, for example, and even Birch Books the year before, even though half of that was residential, which isn't my favourite, I must say. But, well... This year, I've got to say, I'm a little underwhelmed. My first glimpse of it was a bit like, really? Rather than, oh, definitely. I mean, usually, uh, when something fantastic comes out, like, say, the diner, when that was released, I just, I'd bought it immediately in my mind. You know, there was absolutely no chance of me not getting it. But this... I'm not actually that certain. So uh, I don't want to really lay into it with uh, the reasons why that is my opinion. Uh, so I thought I'd limit myself to three good points and three bad points uh, that I've seen initially. And then I'll do a more thorough uh, review on it when I've bought it. Because yes, I probably will still buy it. Um, <laughs> that's not certain in this case. But um, yeah, anyway, I don't want to fill this hall with my thoughts on this modular. So I think the first thing that really leaps to mind that is a good point is the different shape of this modular. We haven't just gone for the normal square box, uh, either on a corner or flat fronted for the middle of a row. Uh, so I think that is a good idea, and you can see what they were trying to do, a bit of a sort of uh, flat iron building in New York sort of shape, uh, but obviously that has its compromises for the interior and even for the rest of the external space, but I think they've dealt with that rather well actually, so I'll give that as a plus point, it's definitely good for variety. Uh, the second uh, good point that I really liked when I was looking through the pictures was the build for this roof section at the top. It's all bricks on the side, uh, and I just think the shape is absolutely perfect for uh, imitating real life. So I really like that, especially in this sand green colour. So I think that is uh, an example of some of the good techniques that are used throughout this uh, this modular and I think that's what modulars are fast becoming in a way it's kind of a, a way of showing off new design techniques rather than necessarily uh, a great set to kind of have in your city anyway uh, and the third point that I really like is wow the art gallery I think this is a really good idea El Cubo it's called and it's kind of got this Picasso picture down here on the left and even a clear sort of representation of the Creator Expert logo there on the plinth. So I really like that as well. Uh, I'm not too sure about the dots picture in the background, because let's face it, that's essentially what it is. <laughs> so on to my three bad things, and I think these are sadly more significant. Uh, the first is the repetitious nature of the build. Uh, if you look at this side profile that sort of froze on the 360 view uh, from the LEGO website, and you ignore the sort of quite interesting turreted sort of round uh, portion on the left uh, and focus on the solid wall section which will be one of your advantages uh, when you're looking at it in your city it's just repetitious we've got three flower beds at the bottom three windows above them three windows above that three windows above that in the roof and then even three repetitions of the same sort of roof edge detail at the very top oh my it's so boring i mean the only variation we've got in the whole thing is that balcony on the third window in the middle floor. Oh, so what? I mean, it's just not very interesting to me. So I think that's a bit sad. Um, next picture. Oh, wow. It's, it's the colour scheme. 
I, I chose this picture to show off this because I just wanted to highlight all the different colours on show at once. I mean, it's an absolute cacophony. If you just look at the greens, we've got bright green for those sort of flower leaves around all the window edges. We've got normal green down in the flower boxes at the ground level. We've got sand green on the roof. We've got dark green on the employees' uh, trousers. We've got lime green in the backdrop there. We've got three different blues in view, purple, pink. Oh, it's absolutely crazy. Dark red, red, brown. They've pretty much got all the colours. And that's before you even get to the different wall colours of the uh, sort of light skin tone and the medium nougat and the dark orange and the dark green again. I mean, wow, it is just an absolute avalanche of colour. It's almost an assault on the eyes. So I think they should have kind of picked uh, a main palette of sort of two or three colours and then two or three main uh, uh, sort of highlighting colours as well, ideally. But wow, yeah, that is pretty busy. Uh, and then third point that is in the negative direction is, wow, it's pretty empty. Look at that ground floor. I mean, it's not far off when uh, the early modulars didn't have an interior, quite frankly. I mean, I love the reception desk, don't get me wrong. Uh, but then a flower pot and a sofa. Are you, are you serious? And a clock on the wall? <laughs> I mean, that's just lazy if you ask me. Uh, so yeah, I think that interior uh, is not ideal. And don't even get me started on the fact we've got one bathroom. <laughs> anyway, uh, enough of my early thoughts on the Boutique Hotel 10297. As I say, I'll probably still be buying it. But uh, anyway, let's get back to our haul for today. Okay, let's get into here. And... This package, I think, was bought kind of out of fear. And, oh no, where is it there? Uh, and when I say fear, it's because sometimes there's a part that's rapidly becoming very expensive. And you think, if I'm ever going to own this piece, I'd better get on and own one now or forever hold my piece because um, it's packaging. Uh, yeah, they're far sort of doubling, oh golly, and tripling in value. Right, so that's that. Uh, and that piece is not immediately apparent. Uh, let me see where it is. It's in here. And it is the Gorilla Grod. Now, if you're into... Which one is this? Marvel or DC? <laughs> I'm thinking it's DC. There we go. If you're into DC, you probably know this character. Uh, I don't really know him at all, apart from I think of him as being King Kong. Uh, I even get the name confused with Groot, <laughs> who's the... Uh, Guy in the Guardians of the Galaxy, the tree guy, just because the name Groot and Grodd sound very similar to me. Uh, but this guy is only from one set, as you might imagine, 76026. Grodd goes bananas. Uh, and, well, he's just a gorilla, really. Big fig. But he's a really nice one with really nice chest printing and foot printing uh, and face printing, indeed. And I just thought, if I ever wanted to do my dream of having a gorilla... Uh, hanging from the top of a very tall building, <laughs> much like uh, he was, uh, what's his name, King Kong in the old movie or even in the more recent one, uh, then, well, I'd have to get on and get one because this was the last one, I think, on uh, Bricklink in the UK. Uh, and all the ones on eBay are already getting to ridiculous money. So that's why I went to this vendor for this guy and all the rest I managed to pick up as I usually do uh, by sort of going through every category and every type of piece and just seeing what leaps out. So a lot of this will be for uh, projects but uh, uh, not a huge amount for um, uh, particular builds uh, unless they had it by chance. Now one thing that you will notice, I noticed, was the sort of electrodes on his head. Now I don't know the backstory to that but obviously he's uh, uh, been interfered with uh, I don't know if he's uh, been complicit with that or if he didn't like that at all. But I was sort of thinking of either sort of putting a black sticker on those or otherwise sort of removing it to make him a normal crazed gorilla <laughs> of massive proportions uh, for hanging off a tall building in my city. Uh, and then the second question, I suppose, after whether I should do that, is which tall building should I have him hanging off? Because there's already quite a lot going on in the tall buildings along my row of sort of the Ferrari Tower, which is leading over uh, the... the uh, uh, Brick Nottingham Post, which has got all sorts of uh, damage being <laughs> exacted on it. Uh, and then we've got the Space Tower, which is being infiltrated. So I'm thinking maybe that run that's the facades on the side where we started. Um, so it might go on the tower, uh, the Black Tower, that, um, uh, what's his name, President Business is currently on the top of. 
uh, or maybe a brand new one. So anyway, uh, it doesn't have to be a tyre that I've already got. Uh, as long as I've got the Gorilla, well, I can still get one. And he was quite well priced. So yeah, I'm really happy that he's in good condition, not scratched at all. Uh, and well, although some might come uh, available in the future, he was the last one in the country. Hooray! <laughs> so that was the main uh, aim of the order. Uh, other things that I got were, oh, a cat hair. That's good. There's the cat hair covered. Uh, I got some of these pieces, which are the sides of an anglerfish. Uh, set 7978, Angler Attack, which is an Atlantis set from 2011. Oh, beautiful. Look at that little face. Uh, there's a few angler fish that Lego have done over the years, but um, I think that one's the best one. So I want to have that in my undersea cabinet. Uh, and I've been piecing it together, but one of the bits that I'm missing is the bit with the stickers on. So basically I got two of one side and two of the other in case some were scuffed or in bad condition. Obviously I can move the stickers using my patented hot tea technique, but I can't repair everything. So the good thing is that, well, I've got too many now actually, because all of these look in decent condition. So at least that's crossed off my list of stickers that I needed that I don't anymore. Uh, then I've got a glow in the dark eye. He only had one of these. If you remember a recentish haul, I tried to get some of these uh, and it turned out they weren't the glow in the dark ones, although I did pay for them to be glow in the dark. So let me get my UV torch and check. And yep, that is definitely glowing in the dark. So there we go. So I was thinking that that could be on the lowest level of my undersea cabinet, maybe peering out of a cave or something like that, or maybe just be in a smaller sort of fish build or something. But um, yeah, it's important that they go in the dark. So that's that. Uh, these dark green slopes are for the final bits of a crane build that's going to be as part of well, another crane in my harbour, kind of as the harbour facades that are way off, to be honest. But, um, you know, I'm getting certain bits when I come across them. Uh, Grey bits we're going to see a lot of for my rock faces and so on in my undersea cabinet. A couple of brown bits for uh, tree branches. A crook. This one came from an advent calendar apparently in 2011, but uh, it's not important. I'm probably just going to take apart all his bits, use his jacket on the fairground, other bits somewhere else. But 89p he was, so you can't really moan at that. Uh, what else we got here? Just a red tile. Ah, now this is very ordinary brick but very very important this is my solution to another problem actually uh, and that was how to use the head of jawson who is a character in the space police line which i happen to have remembered to hook out uh, as an actual fish in my undersea cabinet i've got the character jawson uh, safely to one side and this is a second head and basically instead of the body because that would go over the body like a sort of minifigure sort of 3d head it sort of go like that um, instead of that, I thought I could put this modified brick in and I've got one in tan because I didn't have one in tan and that's, that's why I needed this brick so urgently to be the body of that. And then maybe on each side, I could add a fan piece and I've got two of these wonderfully nice patterned ones, uh, which I thought might look a bit sort of iridescent in the murk of the undersea, put one of those onto each side. And then he's a rather vicious looking deep sea fish as I see it, sort of put that sort of floating around in the water. How about that? I mean, he almost looks a bit like a lionfish or something like that. A very vicious looking fish that's causing a lot of trouble in the Caribbean because it's not native there and it's killing everything that is because <laughs> it doesn't have any predators. But yeah, that looks really nice, I think. So what do you think of that? Very simple fish build, um, but one that uses a really good headpiece in a different way. I like that. So that's why that piece was important. Right, next bag. Oh no, we've still got a few loose pieces. More of those. I just can't stop buying these every time I see them. I'm sure I've got too many now. Uh, and I even got sent some recently. <laughs> so yep, the stack is about, I'd say that long now, which means I can have two really tall plants. So it'll probably look really good. So I'll probably be glad I collected them all when it comes to it. Now here are three really interesting trans medium blue pieces and they're all from the same set uh, and that set is 4620 air operations hq which is a kind of jack stone sort of juniors type set from 2002 and i've already got a couple of these windows but i thought i might need one more uh and well 
it's one of the sort of juniorized ones that kind of slots into those bricks with uh, the sort of uh, groove down the middle, kind of like those fast food corner windows that I used. Uh, but this is kind of got some speakers or an airlock or something like that. So I really like that and I've got a really good idea of how I'm going to use it and it's going to form part of my really big build that's going um, kind of next to the station where all the diggers are at the moment. That's going to be a really big building site probably in the new year though because we've got far too many pro uh, projects on. So that's for that. But in the same set, we've got these two. Now these are kind of windscreen pieces. In fact, they're the same as these but a totally different colour and they're also in transmedium blue. And that set used two of them together as a pair for a massive radar dish and it was kind of like that but the printing is visible from both sides and then that could revolve obviously like you'd see on a ship or on uh, an air control tower or something like that and I just thought that was a brilliant idea. Uh, now when you order this sort of thing uh, you kind of lose track of what size it will be when it appears so this does look absolutely massive doesn't it? Wow! I mean, even my airport's probably too uh, too small for this. I don't know. I'm about to try it on that. But anyway, it's a really good build. Maybe I could use it under the sea. They don't really have spinning sort of dishes underwater, do they? And it's probably a bit big for a ship. Um, but anyway, I just saw that. It was so cheap because it come from a rubbish junior set that uh, I just had to buy it. It's been on my maybe not list for absolutely ages. Uh, so there we go. Right. What else is loose? A burp. Don't really need to discuss that anymore. <laughs> uh, anything else loose? Right, we've got another bag full of very, very colourful bits. And these are all trans one by one round plates. And we've got a lot in trans dark pink, which I think would be nice under the waves. And then the two real favourite neon colours, trans neon yellow and trans neon orange. And they'll fluoresce as well. Let me get my torch again. And there you'll see they're really glowing there. Uh, 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 look at that, really glowing very brightly. So that's really good to have in my lower section of the sea, uh, deep sea cabinet as well. Right, let's open another bag. Let's open this one. It's got lots of small bits in. We've got a torso uh, and it's kind of a gold uh, breastplate type torso and I wanted that for another gold statue, much like the one I've got in the Apollo Arcade. I just wanted to have another one from somewhere else. Uh, and that's from the Flying Warrior from season 15. Uh, so I'll remove the yellow arms and hands and put on some gold arms and hands and then it will be a solid gold or rather probably bronze statue. So that's that. Ah, now a lot of these red slopey pieces, oh golly that's dirty, uh, are for uh, a quite a clever build if I do say so myself. So I'm not going to spoil that but they're all for a build that will be coming up in the shorter term. Uh, then we've got a interesting panel piece, which I kind of bought for the panel, but I don't mind that sticker, so maybe I'll be able to use that. It's um, from the Poison Ivy uh, element of the 2012 version of the Batcave, 6860, uh, and that was the one with the awesome Bane drilling machine in as well. So, yeah, I like that piece. Uh, I'm not sure if I want that sticker on for the purpose where I bought the uh, panel for, but yeah, we'll see. And uh, then we've got loads of bits for the undersea, like these scary spooky fingers. Uh, we've got this being an underwater scooter. I've got a couple of these already, but I figure I'll have loads of divers being pulled around by these. Uh, I've got to work out which way around they go. Do you get pulled that way or does it pull you that way? can't remember. <laughs> I'll do a Google on that, see which way it goes. Uh, we've got a really interesting flame piece. Uh, now this one's slightly different from the ones I've been buying a lot in that they're usually red all the way over and this one's got sort of more yellowy bits on the tip. But I have got a couple of those. So I'll just give a bit of variation in the patch uh, that they are a part of. Uh, some more sort of glowy plants. These bits are really interesting shaped for some plants. Indeed, these sort of macaroni pieces can make for a really interesting coral quite quickly. Something like that with loads of sort of arms moving around. Some of these slopes that are red actually aren't for the uh, interesting build that I won't tell you about. They're for one of my train builds coming up. Yes, there are loads of train builds, always are coming up. Um, and that is for my, uh, do you remember those red tippers? The really old school ones. There were three of them that were going to go on a sort of big tipper, triple, triple tipper wagon. That's quite hard to say. Uh, these will sort of be part of that. Uh, more dishes this time in trans purple. 
a bigger dish in Transpurple. And this has sort of got the antimatter uh, pattern on it, but it's also been used in two other sets, including 70334, Ultimate Beastmaster from 2016. Uh, and I don't know exactly where I'm going to use this, and it might be under the sea as well, but it's it's just a really nice piece, quite frankly. Uh, I could use it as a portal for antimatter, but I've got one of those in a different order coming, and it's a bit bigger. Ah, now this is an incredibly important piece that's been on my list for absolutely ages. Uh, not because I've never had it before, but because I needed just one more uh, to uh, fill out my airport ticket booth. As you can see from this picture of my ticket booth, the uh, thing is absolutely covered in these stickers, but there's one missing on the very bottom left. So this will finish that off. Ah, oh, relax. I can take that off my list and really enjoy the happy feeling of <laughs> not needing these anymore. Uh, so they're from 3182 uh, Airport from 2010, which is probably uh, one of the best airports that LEGO have done, I think. And that's the one with the white and red bottomed plane. Uh, yeah, so that's really nice. Glad to have that. Uh, we've got tread plate, as you might expect. We've got, yes, yet more of these. And I've had so many of these. You must know the set they come from by now, off by heart. So uh, let's say it all together. These are from 70808, Super Cycle Chase. And what year is that from, guys? Yep, that's right, 2014. So, um, yeah, I kind of picked these up because they're incredibly cheap every time I see them. I'm sure I'll be doing more Super Secret Police builds uh in the future i've got one kind of spec'd out and i'm getting parts for and i'm sure there'll be a lot more scenes with the, the ssp in the future as well though this is incredibly dirty as well but i'm sure that'll clean up uh, a few bananas lots of these little uh, teeth pieces in spring green uh, which might augment a beastie under the waves or something like that some more of those tree pieces and ah, now this is quite interesting uh, this is kind of the ammunition from a lot of uh, kind of catapult pieces in Nexo Knight sets, uh, including uh, 72005, Aaron's Crossbow in 2018. Uh, but I thought uh, I kind of needed something for a blacksmith to be holding in his tongs. So if you imagine a pair of tongs that a blacksmith is holding, then he might have a red hot piece of metal that he's kind of bashing into shape. You could also really have a glass blower, really, couldn't you? Sort of blowing in that end and, and making a, a piece of glass at the other end of that. But I thought that would be a red hot bit of metal that he was sort of hammering uh, away at at the other end. Uh, so I only needed one of those as a result. But yeah, I thought that was a really interesting piece. So that's what I'm going to use that for. Okay, next bag. This one looks largely rock pieces. Well, just random stickers that I'm gonna remove. Uh, more of those, more of these wedge plates. These are going to make all my rock faces really interesting. I mean, they're kind of interesting in a great big stack like that already. More of these in lime green. A bit grubby, some of those, almost a bit sun damaged, but I think that might just be dirt. Uh, then we've got hairbrushes for coral. We've got one of the glow in the dark dinosaur tails there. This is one of my favourite bricks to pick up. It's got a double purpose. We've got a tread plate sticker that I can move onto a 1x4 tile. Uh, and then we've got a 2x4 uh, brick in light bluish grey, which is always very useful. So I really like them. Uh, and they were uh, 17p, which is a bit dear, but for both purposes, it makes it all right, I think. Uh, then we've got quite a lot of old grey in here as well. One of these uh, barrier sort of pieces that I'm going to be using in one of my train builds. Uh, lots of these... Uh, one by two slopes and I've deliberately got a load of these in old grey partially because they were cheap cost effective uh, and because that'll give me that real subtle color variation when they're all together with all the uh, light bluish grey pieces and so on that I always show so you know it's not that big a contrast but it really does uh, make a difference when there's a great big expanse of it uh, some plates are the same oh I'm having a real glow in the dark uh, haul today because we've got a glow in the dark rat I do have one of these somewhere. I think it's in my subway, isn't it? Um, but I figured I could probably use another one somewhere, especially if I'm going to be doing loads of uh, underground scenes uh, with my mine and so on. And having a glow-in-the-dark rat, well, it's better than a normal one, really, isn't it? And I think that's everything. We've got a few cherries. Uh, I've just obviously bought uh, as many little parts as I can uh, that are cost-effective. A couple of these, um, what are they called? Snap connectors, because I have got a few more snap pieces uh, since we did the red bridge. 
uh, on other halls, and I just need these to hold them all together because they're pretty useless <laughs> joining in with uh, uh, with anything other than a Technic um, pin on that bit there. So there we go. Two more bags to go. What have we got? This is a nice piece. It says big one with a kind of jagged um, pattern there. That's because it's kind of on the fireworks type rocket uh, from 7590, Woody and Buzz to the rescue, 2010. Uh, that is um, obviously a Toy Story set, but I just thought, well, that could be all sorts of things, couldn't it? It could be a big firework that somebody's letting off on a rooftop or something like that. Uh, in fact, that's probably what I'll use it for. I don't know. Well, it could be some sort of oil drum, uh, but I really like the patterning and the sort of branding on that one. I mean, golly, it could go anywhere, really. Big one. Wherever you need a big one, essentially. Uh, then we've got a couple more of those scooters, uh, underwater scooters, but in black. Uh, and though they use the yellow ones in all the Tan Diver set, these black ones came in all sorts of different sets, uh, like 6519 Turbo Tiger, which is actually a racing car from 2000, uh, where they were kind of, well, I guess sort of jet propulsion on the back of it or something. So there we go. Yeah. Anyway, nice stuff. Those maybe the baddies will have the black ones or something like that. Uh, a few tyres. And wheels, we've got one of these pieces, which is sort of weeds for under the sea. Uh, that's kind of a bionicle piece. Uh, it's the head of 8561 Novok from 2012, uh, if you're interested. More bright uh, green pieces for my fairground. Ah, now this is something I've had on my list for absolutely ages as well. And it's just for that little sticker there. Uh, so this piece comes from uh, the Cargo Train 7898 Cargo Train Deluxe from 2006, which is the green train that I call the Hulk. Uh, and basically there's a truck that comes with that set that has this roof on it. And I quite like that truck, but I thought it was a bit rubbish with its uh, wing mirrors and uh, a few other parts. It looked a bit weedy. So basically I've rebuilt that truck and here it is. And you'll see it's missing. Uh, vital parts. Let's just use that now. I've got these parts to one side so we can get some sort of roof mounted lights and that bits go under there and then I can put that on there. Oh it's finally complete <laughs> and all just for that sticker which I'm going to have to straighten out. You know how. Got some coloured doors on that and it will have a couple of pallets for my cargo area. It's a tipper uh, and that bit comes down and so on. Most of it is borrowed from that, but I've very much changed the cab to make it a lot more chunky and make it a bit more modern and use some different stickers and so on. So that's my version of that. It's not different enough to really warrant its own video. Uh, so I thought I'd show it as part of this haul uh, to show why I bought that. So that can go there. Uh, right, what else? Yes, we were doing this bag, weren't we? Oh, big one number two. So that's good. Whereas there's one big one, there's another. And also from that set are these rather interesting legs. Uh, which I've got no idea what I'll use them for. Maybe a sort of uh, man, uh, a very tall man at the fairground or something. I don't really want to do a freak show, but, you know, you could do. Uh, but these would have been Woody's uh, legs from that Toy Story set, 7590. Um, but I've just never seen them before. I didn't even know they existed. So once I knew they did, I thought I had to have them. So maybe I could give them to a clown or something like that. Um, yeah, they're really interesting. Huh. Who knew? Right, so that's them. Um, then these dark blue ones are for the same build as these red ones over here, so that will have confused you. Uh, oh, that's good. That is um, another part that I've just bought for the sticker, and that's from the ATM Heist Battle set, 76082. Uh, I just want to standardise the ATMs in my uh, city, so uh, that is the sticker I've chosen. It looks very dirty underneath. It looks a bit bumpy if you get the light right. Uh, let's see if you can see that. There we go. Oh, look at all those bits of dirt under with, underneath, sorry. So, um, yeah, that will be a challenge to get that into a usable state. But I've done it before, so there we go. Uh, more slopes, more slopes, a couple more hairbrushes, a couple more wheels. Uh, yep, jolly good. And then the final bag, probably the biggest. 
we've got a lot of these Technic bricks, which are quite old and have all the holes through them that way, that way, and that way. And I've just found them really, really useful when doing my ride builds uh, for use kind of underneath in a cavity. So I'm probably, when I start mounting those in, going to use some of these to replace uh, some of the bricks that I have been using uh, just because these are so versatile. Basically just making sure an axle doesn't go awry, essentially. Um, and they're really cheap in old grey. I don't think they make them anymore. Got a couple of big panels in grey that I just wanted to mind the sea area just to sort of block in bigger sections. But these ones actually came with these hazard stripes. And that's because they were part of the um, container stacker 7992. Uh, from 2007 there's also a different set has the same sort of ones with red hazard stripes on and I've used those um, both sets already uh, kind of on my container ship uh, just to represent a container that's got hazardous goods inside like octane canisters or something like that so I'll probably transfer these stripes onto a different set of panels so I can use again both parts the panel part in the undersea and the stripy parts uh, on a container that I've already got. Uh, a couple more of those big bricks just for supporting stuff. A rail, which I now realize I don't need. So the fact that it's massively color stained doesn't matter. Wow, that is really tobacco-y gray. Uh, yeah, so that's, I don't know, I might be able to decorate something or just have it under the sea as a bit of scrap or something, I don't know. Then lots and lots of other slopes. I don't think we can, underestimate or overestimate how many of these we're going to need under the sea a lot more plant pieces as well in fact they look really good as a stack like that don't they for under the sea probably want to rotate the leaves a little bit make it a bit more random but um yeah that doesn't look bad as a sort of climbing plant already so lots of those as well uh, so i can just chip all those on the top Wow, so, uh, yeah, I've covered up half of the interesting stuff with boring stuff, so I'll just move all of those. I think some of the uh, best things, apart from the things that have been on my list for ages, like that very simple uh, lid there, have been these junior pieces, which look absolutely great as a radar dish. I mean, the shape is absolutely perfect. You must agree. Uh, Grod, of course. Is it Grod? Yeah, I've got it right. Yeah, Grod, the gorilla. He's obviously uh, the main reason for the order and definitely the best thing in it. So that was a success. Uh, a couple more panels, loads of stuff for the undersea, of course. Uh, some new projects as well. A few glow-in-the-dark pieces that are glow-in-the-dark, and that's always a plus. And <laughs> the solution to the Jawson fish problem, which I think is a major success as well. Oh, and these. Yeah, quite a lot of good things that I've wanted for a while to cross off my wanted list. Awesome. Well, another very successful haul, I think you'll agree. Uh, you must let me know whether you liked my early thoughts on the modular or whether you thought it was a bit too brief to be of use. Uh, I will very much appreciate getting your views on that. Uh, I like to keep the channel current and evolving and all the rest of it. So uh, do let me know either way uh, on that one. Uh, but as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below, especially over the Christmas period. Uh, and if you do want to send me something, you can to the usual address. I'm really looking forward to opening all of those as an extra Christmas uh, day. <laughs> Uh, and then next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing uh, the second part of the Japanese sushi restaurant on Friday. And then I really must do uh, a fairground video on Monday, otherwise I'll get more complaints, given that I skipped it this Monday due to my very exciting cabinet backdrop. Uh, and then obviously a haul next Wednesday as well. So until all of that, see you! Uh.